Hello. Today we're sitting here with the principal of the Dunmore Elementary Center in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and we'd like to find out if we can get some of his feedback on the closing of the school. Hi, my name is Matt Quinn. I'm the principal at Dunmore Elementary Center. We're located roughly two blocks from the Scranton State School for the Deaf. This being my first year as the principal at the elementary center, I've faced challenges that I could not foresee when I took the job. One of our challenges was we had a student who was mainstreamed that has hearing impairment, has the cochlear implants. Now, we have mainstreamed the student for several years in our building. Um, I'm very familiar with him. What I did not realize is to the extent that his disability, if you want to call it that, is limits him in the regular ed curriculum. We built a relationship early on this year with the Scranton State School for the Deaf to start allowing our student to go down to the building to participate in an ALS class where he is now interacting with deaf peers. When I first walked into that building, I am born and raised in Scranton, PA, I knew the deaf school was there. I, ha I was not aware uh, to the extent of what happens there. I've walked out of that building with a new feeling of how much is happening right underneath our nose in Northeast PA. The education, the interaction, the smiles that I see when I go down there, I was blown away when I walked out of that building. I, I, I sometimes feel I was very ignorant to what was down on North Washington Avenue, and I, I feel bad about that. What a resource we have right underneath our nose that we can't let go away. You know, there's, there's a lot of things in life that we put a price tag on. When we see our students smile, when we see them enjoy going to school, that's something we can only hope for, both as educators and as parents. Um, so it sounds to me that you saw a pretty tight-knit community over at this school. A community that I think most people aren't really aware of. Exactly. It's, it's, it's a world unto itself, but we're trying to bridge that gap now, and we want to become part of that world, and we're just in the beginning stages of this. If there was a message that you could give right now to the teachers in the surrounding school districts that may be affected by the change of the school location or of the transfer of the students, what would that be to ensure that they get on the bandwagon and really help support that this school stay open? My message to them is we don't know what the future holds. We are going to have students in all of our districts that are going to need services. We have that resource right here in Northeast PA. It would be a shame, it would be very disheartening to see that leave our area. Our students belong in their home districts and we have the resource to give them the programs that they need. So if it isn't broke, don't fix it. I come from the old adage, we have money available I'm sure of that I run a budget in the school as a lot of people run budgets we have to stress the importance if something's important enough we can hopefully find the money to do it we don't want to lose something this good thank you so much uh, we appreciate your comments and your views and all we can hope for is that we reach the right people who have the ability to help us keep this school here in Scranton Pennsylvania Thank you. Thank you. Does Governor Rendell have a clue of what devastating consequences are involved in relocating these students and families to other areas outside of PA? Not to mention the negative impact this will have on these people's lives and futures. Don't we all deserve a proper education and an environment to thrive to get all the self-esteem and intelligence required to survive in the world?
Why was this specialized state-funded school given such short notice for closing its doors to its future enrollments? Its students that are enrolled and the future of its ongoing success stories made already with these parents and students for generations. Why? Take a closer look and decide for yourself if these students stand a chance in mainstream facility. Can a hearing impaired or a deaf person ever hope to achieve the same as a hearing person in the goals of holding down a stable place of employment with solid wage and benefits? Since being deaf is not considered a disability, there are no health insurances that cover the extra expenses. Who will pay for them when they graduate? It's up to them. Give them a chance. Why does the Department of Education feel this school is unworthy of accepting it as a legitimate school to fund as well as keep alive? And why was this school deprived of proper marketing tools via the internet to attract more enrollment in parents and students that are deaf or hearing impaired? Why was this school not honored and taken care of the way any school deserves to in the system? Why?